This is your moment to maximize. Maximize moments with Milton Audio Experience. Hey, Maximizers, this is Milton Herring coming at you today. We got an interview today with my good friend, Evan Money. And Evan, uh, gosh, he really, no words can express how awesome he is and all the cool things he's done in his lifetime. And I think, is it evanmoney.com where they can find more about you, my friend? That is the one. That is the one. And uh, we're going to talk about books. We're going to talk about relationships. We're going to talk about mindset. And I know you guys are going to enjoy it today. Um, so let's kick it off today. Evan Money, you are number one bestseller on Amazon right now. And the title of your book is money talks negativity walks won't you just give us a brief snapshot and i talk about brief because that's going to play into what your book kind of is mapped after so go ahead and let's let's talk about that all right so it is a fast fun read that is guaranteed to lift your spirits and massively increase your health relationships and finances and it's bite-sized, bite-sized nuggets of wisdom that you can instantly apply to your life. And I give inspiring messages that, again, guaranteed to unlock the solutions to your biggest challenges. And I'm a big, firm believer in what good is a nugget of wisdom if you can't digest it. So it's gotta be short, easily digestible. We're talking one, two-page chapters. So you can read, apply, and grow. So that's that's the whole premise of the book. That is wonderful. I love bite-sized chapters, and we we've had a little discussion about that. How really, you know, I, I think your book is a bridge between you know where our society is, where reading is really on a decline, but you know, books are still being sold. You know, people are still wanting to to look at something, but there's still maybe a gap that needs to be bridged between, you know, getting people from the cover really to digesting the material. And I think the book <laughs> does that. Am I right? You're absolutely right. And here's, here's a good stat for you. 95% of the people that buy a nonfiction book, Milton, never finish the book. Oh my. Yeah. So you, what you said was so apropos. It's a lot. Yeah. Plenty of people buy very few read. They, they kind of, they, they do what's called shelf help. You know, they buy the book and stick it on the shelf. And it's like, you know, the book you read isn't going to help. Or the book you didn't read isn't going to help. So you got to take it off the shelf, actually get through it. But I don't blame a lot of people. I mean, I've had books that I, you know, heard about. People were raving about. And I was like, oh, I got to get it. So I Amazon Prime and it shows up. And I'm starting to read. I'm like, oh, my gosh. You know, we're on, we're on page 50. And I'm like, dude, you could have told me that in one paragraph. What are, what are we doing here? So... But I understand in the in the book world when it's on a shelf, you know, if you're paying for it, you think, oh, I want to get, I'm, I'm paying for it, I want it as big as possible. But that that doesn't really apply to a book getting finished or read. So I'd rather have somebody buy one of my books and actually be able to read it and get through it. So henceforth, short chapters, bite sized, easily digestible, and easily ap applicationable because. I don't want people to sit and ponder on something for a year. I want them to close the book and go take action on it right now. Yeah. And I think that's true. In your history of, of writing as an author, Nevin, you've your other book, Take Action, and the World Is Yours. Uh, um, you have you have a good you have a style that that really does hit you where you need to get hit <laughs> in that moment, and it doesn't take like you said, it doesn't take fifty pages to get to the point across. And I think I think that's so key. And if people want to read, they want to listen, just like your your app too. And I, listeners, you know, if you don't know, Evan Money does have a app. And what's your what's your app called again? It's it's just uh, yeah, it's, it's just Evan Money. So whether it's uh, uh, Apple or the other one, you know, you just go to your app store and just type in Evan Money, and it pops right up. Yeah, and I, I love it when you when you send it out, and it's usually a quote or a story um, that ties in, that's impactful, that's now, and that's quick and to the point, and and you don't you don't pull any punches, you don't leave people guessing or thinking. It's it's what you need at that moment, and I appreciate you doing that as well. And I enjoy listening to those episodes when you do send those out. So continue to do that so maximizers guys download the app as well also go to amazon grab that book um money talks negativity walks just a couple couple things about the book real quick evan we 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 discussed about you know the we talked about the 98 percent and the two percent 
and we talked about really the society that we live in, how it's really it's bent towards maybe a a, a negative negative culture, I guess. And and a lot of people need optimism, they need encouragement, they need need their spirits lifted. Could you speak a little bit more on that? Absolutely. No, great question. I, I I really dove into this when I was interviewing Darren Hardy, the former publisher of Success. I think many of your listeners are familiar with Darren. And we really dove into this, and he was telling me off camera. He said, you know, Ev, and I'll never forget this story. He goes, think about it. And at the time, I think Darren splits between San Diego and Miami. I mean, he's all over the place. But we were in San Diego at the time. And he goes, you think about it. You know, you just look, at all, look at all the traffic on the five freeway. So if anybody that's ever been on the five to San Diego, you know what traffic's like. And he goes, it's so interesting. He's like, you're driving on the freeway, and there's an accident on the other side of the freeway. So in California, you know, we got these big dividers. We try to keep people's eyes from even looking over there. But, you know, you see some lights on the other side of the freeway, way cleared off. You know, it's not even near you. And the first thing we do is we slow down. And what do we do? When we look and we rubberneck and slow down, hit the brakes. And yet on the right hand side, if you're going south on the five, there's an epic sunset every night on everybody's drive home. And everybody just flies right by it and nobody looks. And we're, we're just wired, I, I know God created, we wi- wired us this way for the negative, more of a survival instinct. And so what the media has done is they figure that out, and so that's how they draw us in. I mean, think about it, you go to the airport, and can you imagine a little ticker on CNN saying, hey, weather's great, world's great, you know, life's tremendous. You know, you're just going to walk right by. Nobody cares. But it's got to be a crisis. You know, that's why it's Crisis News Network. You know, crisis over here, crisis over there, crisis, crisis, because they have to get your attention. And so the media has understood that, hey, it's got to be negative to get your attention. And so we as the two percenters got to realize that, hey, we're naturally wired to do that. So what we need to do is start connecting to not fake news, but good news Mm -hmm. and saying, hey, you know what? It's probably not the best thing to start my day with CNN. It's probably not the best day. Like my bride just recently, just think about this. My bride updated her phone, and with the phone, you get these automatic updates, right? You don't have to think about. So whenever you would check, turn your phone on, there'd be a scroll of top news you know, of the day. And you know, you can just flip it and turn it off, but it's there. And so I said, I told my bride, I said, you gotta go in there and change that. She goes, I never look. I go, I know, but it's still there. You know, and you may glance at it, but it's just we're inundated with all this negative. So you got to actually go into your settings, yep. you know, in your mind and in your phone and say, hey, how can I eliminate this bad news and where can I find some good news? And so a great way to start your day is with money talks and negativity walks or another, another positive amazing book that's been on the number one bestseller list. I mean, I'm an Amazon number one bestseller, it's exciting, but I'll tell you a book that's been on the Amazon number one bestselling list for the last mm, at least 500 years, and, and that is the Bible. Ooh. And they, don't, they, don't even, they don't even list it on the bestseller list because people are like, oh, nobody wants to see that, they're tired of it. So you talk about some good news in the morning, hey, crack that one open. And talk about short and sweet, right? I mean, it's right to the point. doesn't pull any punches. That, that's why I love the book of Proverbs. That was another inspiration for Money Talks, Negativity Walks. It was like, hey, two sentences. It's like, wow, I'm good. Okay, I can take action on that. So I think from our mindset, it's understanding we need to be intentional about seeking good news in the morning rather than letting be inundated by the world and their bad news because it's, you know, it's thrown at us everywhere. So we got to set up the intentional blocks and say, hey, I want to start my day with some great news and be a good news person. So when somebody asks me how I'm doing, hey, I got great news for you. Hey, let me tell you something exciting. So that, that's kind of my thoughts on that one. I love it. And I think, I think you know, Proverbs, come on now. I mean, how much wisdom and, and nuggets is, mm. is in that book in one chapter? I think you can <laughs> – Oh my goodness. Anyways, guys, maximizes if you don't read the good book, the Bible, um, pick it up, start with Proverbs, get you get you a good good translation and, and roll with it, and you'll be surprised after a thirty day stint of it how much change it'll it'll make in your life and impact you. Um, Evan, relationship goals. Talk to us. Relationship goals. Talk to talk to the audience. Give me uh you, you recently just set a new site on a long term goal. Why don't you share that with our audience? 
Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. So as a as a Utah guy now, Milton, I'll tell you who started the trend first. I got a chance to connect with him a little bit, and we were talking about possibly doing a movie with him. But he's the guy that invented the the 50 50 50. He did 50 Ironmans full length, not this half or quarter stuff. He did 50 full length Ironmans back to back in 50 consecutive days in 50 states. No way. Yes. Yes yeah. way. Oh my. Yeah, he did it. Unbelievable. And has his his times actually started getting better. If you can believe that. Wow. So this guy's super athlete. But he kind of inspired me, and I was like, okay, 50, 50, 50. I was like, yeah, you know, kind of stu- stuck with me. It's kind of a you know catchy name. I was like, hmm. So many of your listeners know that my bride and I we get remarried in a different state or country every year. Yes. That's right. And for the guys listening, that means a different honeymoon every year. Yes. I still cannot, I cannot fathom, Milton, why any red-blooded American, or international man for that reason, would settle for just one honeymoon. I mean, why would you do that? Why? 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 So from the honeymoon aspect, it's just exciting. But we get remarried, different state or country every year. So my new goal is we're going to get, by my 100th birthday, we are going to get married 100 times. So on my 100th birthday, that will be our 100th wedding. So that is the new big goal, and that constitutes relationships, and that constitutes health, and also finances it in there, because we want it to be a nice wedding, right? So right. that's kind of what I'm all about, is helping people bring their dreams to life and improve health, relationships, and finances. So that one goal kind of encompasses everything. So we are super excited about it. So we just got back from wedding number 23 in Vancouver, BC, had a blast and for those that are excited and love to see wedding pictures and all of that you can visit evanlovessusan.com whole thing spelled out Evan loves Susan back to back s's evanlovessusan.com and I've got pictures of all our weddings on there and there's pictures of me with hair if you can believe that so, <laughs> we go way back baby go way back <laughs> Now, I'm, I'm going to ask you something, Evan. I mean, this is going to probably get a little bit more deeper. Um, you you obviously, I mean, and it comes across the the joy and the spirit you have in relation regarding your, your wife and bride and how that overflows to your children and even overflows to other parts of your life, whether it's your, your health or your business and, and everything else that you're doing. Um, talk, talk to me. I, I'm, I'm Joe Scott on the street, and... I need some help. I, I, how did you, Evan, help me get to that point where I see my relationships as deeply as you do? What do I need to do? Mm, that is a fantastic question. I, I do know Joe Scott, just so you know. So. <laughs> Joe, if you're yeah, listening, that, I didn't mean to, Joe, I didn't mean to call you out like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've got a couple, and I, I love, I'll, I'll tell you what, Milton, I love going deep. And when I connect and converse, especially with males, I understand you either got to go right to the bone or you're going to sit on the surface for the next 20 years. Right. So I love digging in. I love going deep. So bring it on, my friend. But for Joe Scott, assuming Joe Scott's married, I would, I'm would i going to give him some marriage advice. And I'm going to give just – I'm not married yet advice. So, And these are just kind of mindsets and things to think about. So. Uh, we were talking earlier, you know, regarding uh, this. Michael Beckwith taught me this one, and I kind of rephrased it. But again, I still have to give him props because, you know, he cut his hair to look like me now. So, uh, so the the reality is that the state that you were married in that that doesn't govern your marriage. The state doesn't govern your marriage. Rather, your state of mind does. And so, most people are usually in a marriage relationship. They're struggling. They're either married and miserable or they're divorced and desperate and so that state of mind doesn't help anything so it's about changing that state of mind that's one of the reasons we get remarried in a different state or country every year because it changes our state we're either planning a wedding which we're excited about because your first wedding is so stressful oh my gosh i don't know why anyone settled for having just one because it's so stressful you worry about aunt martha and where's she gonna sit no what kind of cake but after 23 weddings it's just fun it's no stress we spend our time, the people that officiate our wedding, we spend most of our time calming them down because they're thinking, oh, it's gonna be perfect and all this. We're like, dude, we've done this 23 times. It's gonna be a blast, don't worry about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, again, so I'm either planning a wedding or I'm on a post-honeymoon bliss. So I'm in that state 
the, the way the world looks, the way I look at my bride, everything shifts. And so from a, from a marriage perspective, I would just encourage people to understand that you, you have to break the if-then cycle. You know, well, you know, if she would do this, then I would do that. Or if he would do this, then I would do that. You know, this if then, if then, if then, if then. Well, if he'd pick up more around the house, or if she'd pay more attention to me, or if, you know, if she was a little more romantic, or you know, if then, if then, if then. You have to break that cycle. That cycle has to break. And so you need to, you know, the term, you know, you're you're in Utah recording this, so we use some cowboy terms, right? Yeah. You, know, you got <laughs> you, know, you heard it, you got a cowboy up. And so, hey cowboy, when was the last time you did the dishes? Mm. You know? And my bride is happens to, her love language happens to be you know you talk about bestsellers I mean hey I'm an Amazon number one bestseller but guess what you know the five love languages has been on the bestseller list for 25 years long time long time yes and there's a reason for that so with me my bride's love language is acts of service so when I do dishes great things happen in the bedroom so I embrace the dishwashing I have cowboyed up and done the dishes and it plays great benefits and so <laughs> So We're rather best. than yeah, and so it's you know it, it, rather than the classic you know I'm gonna I'm gonna yell at the fire I'm gonna and for the ladies right you know I'm gonna nag the fireplace and, and nag at the fireplace until it gives me fire without giving it any wood, you know you you got to give it some wood, so someone's got to break that cycle and step up and say you know what I'm gonna be the first to forgive I'm gonna be the first to say hey I don't feel like doing this but I'm gonna do it anyway, and. Coming it from that angle instead of playing the if then game because the if ga if then game doesn't get you anywhere the if then game gets you divorced that's where it gets you and so from a relationship side that can be done even if you're not married or with the boss or whatever you, you got to get break the if then cycle and then to Joe Scott regarding relationships the next thing that is incredibly healing incredibly impactful is R O F so I want everybody to write that down R O F R O F okay yep. Yeah. Everybody's familiar with ROI, you know, my return on investment here. But ROF is return on forgiveness. And yes, mm. I'm talking about forgiveness. And I know most of us, all of us, have that one person, you know, that doesn't deserve it. I don't want, yeah, I'm good with forgiveness, but not that person. You know, anybody but that person. We're always holding on to that one. And I had that one for a long time, Milton. That one was my dad. So I am at formally, I'm formally now, I was the, formally the president of the Father-Son Issues Club. And I have since stepped down from that position. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and the, it's interesting, the year I finally forgave my dad, Milton, that's the year I tripled my income. Mm. So how many of you listeners, listen to this podcast right now, would love to triple your income? Oh yeah, me, yeah. me, me, me. You know, what are you going to imagine tripling your income? What would you do with that kind of capital? Well, here's the best way to do it. Start forgiving. And I'm talking about that person, you know, the one that doesn't deserve it. And yes, I know well, Ab, you don't understand what that person did to me. You're absolutely right. I don't understand. But it's not about them. It's about you. It's about you. You get to forgive them. You get to break the cycle. The only person that's losing here is you. You have to break that cycle. And so I did a, a podcast recently, and we talked about this, and it was so interesting. The host actually emailed me back today and said, gosh, Ev, you know what? I, I went back over the notes of the podcast, and I did what you said. You know, I, I ended up writing my dad a letter, and my dad died a couple years ago, and I never really had closure on some of my father-son issues. And, you know, his dad was – he's well, my dad would be 96 today, so that kind of gives you an idea of where wow. he was age-wise. But he waited that long – to, to finally settle these father-son issues with ROF. And he's like, just thank you so much. I, I wrote that letter, I feel so much better. So I'm, I'm gonna encourage your listeners to do the same thing. Doesn't matter if the person's alive or dead, but get out a pen and a piece of paper, not a text, not an email, but a pen and a piece of paper and start writing. Proven, and I'll give you another one. You, you thought tripling, if tripling your income doesn't get your attention, how would you like to increase your income a thousand fold, Milton? Oof. Yeah, bring yeah, it. You, yeah, you run those numbers, right? Let, let's run those numbers. A thousand percent, okay, increase. So check this out. So there was a young man who was sexually abused when he was young, consistently, and on top of that, he was physically abused by his father, uh, to the tone of he was in a coma for three days because his dad beat him up one day so bad. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that was his world. 
and he was in his early teens and Oprah Winfrey was on and Oprah was talking about the cathartic process, which I didn't know what that word meant at the time and neither did the guy when he was telling the story, it was pretty funny. He's telling the story and he's like, I don't know what cathartic meant. I'm like, gosh, I don't either. Let me go Google that and look it up. But it was such a cleansing, Oprah was talking about the cleansing experience of writing, of journaling. So he's like, what the heck, what do I got to lose? You know, I just got out of a coma, you know, I got all this negative stuff. So he started writing, but he was so scared that someone would find his journal and then, you know, hey, look at this. Whoa. So he changed the names of everybody. And okay. so he just made up characters, he made up characters, but he was basically journaling about his life and cleansing from that. And it was those journals that a friend actually found a couple of years later, maybe four or five years later and said, wow, man, this stuff is pretty good. Who are these people? You ought to do a play or something like that. And so from those journals is what became the material for Tyler Perry's plays mm. that everyone now knows about. And so here's the interesting part. Here's what I'm getting. A lot of people don't know the story. They kind of know about Tyler Perry and the plays. But in the beginning, Tyler, for a couple years, he was trying to put these plays on, and they were massive failures, Milton. I mean, people were like walking out in the middle, you know. You, you know it's bad when they're walking out. When right? they're booing, you walk, yeah, when they're just yeah. walking out, yeah. <laughs> So when we had the big premiere of Words of Art, you know, one of my, my documentaries, you know, all my documentaries, everyone has stayed in their seats, right? You know, they, they also, at least they stayed, right? They didn't just get out and walk out of the theater. Um, so people were walking out of the theater and he just couldn't figure it out. He was losing money, sleeping in his car. I mean, a lot of people know that story, but people don't know that when his success hit was when he finally forgave his dad, Milton. He said, you know what? I'm finally gonna forgive my father for all the junk that he did to me. And the year he forgave his dad, that is when his plays took off. That's when his writing changed and his income went up a thousand times. Mm. Yeah. Now, obviously when you're sleeping in your car, you're not making a whole lot of money, so. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> a thousand times anything is really good. So, hey, for me it was triple, for Tyler Perry it was a thousand, but that is the power of forgiveness. So I just encourage Joe Scott, anybody listening, to leverage that power today. And so if that person's not alive, write that letter. You know, you can write it, you can take it to their gravesite, you can write it, you know, burn it up, or you can write it and stick it somewhere, but you have to write the letter. Write that letter and watch what happens. Awesome. As Joe, I appreciate your advice, Evan, and your your guidance and direction. I'm gonna work on my state of mind. I'm going to work on ROF and uh, I'm going to figure out my wife's love language. So I want to, I want to make some investments that'll pay some dividends down the road. <laughs> so I appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. Hey guys, if you ever really do want to get deeper relationship advice, go ahead and find Evan Money, listen to listen to him, follow him and uh, I guarantee you'll be you'll be not only encouraged in your relationships, but you'll also be inspired to do more uh, because I think we all have we all have this one life to live and it, it, it's going to come to an end at some point uh, but one thing that you'll always know at the end of your life and you can hear this Evan is, is the relationships that you have it's not how much money always you have it's not how many toys you collected it's not it's not how many accolades you were given it's the relationships that you you've invested in it's relationships that you've poured into and that you continue to leave a legacy behind with and, and I want to encourage you that and Evan thank you for being such an example to us and, and I want I want to kind of close this out this this segment out and guys we're going to have Evan back on again uh, but I want him to really share about uh, you gave me a great quote uh recently and I and I want you to leave leave us really that a, a good nugget talking about the grass is greener. Um mm. and I want you to All share right. that sh share that um and, and really send us out with a new perspective on our current state and where we're at and how to, to live life in this moment and to be in this moment and not to think about things that you don't have or you know you you go ahead and lead us out and I appreciate that. Oh absolutely man. So the, the simple truth is the grass is greener where you water it. Now, I, I didn't come up with that quote, and unfortunately, I, I don't have who wrote it, but um, I'm giving it to you. The grass is greener where you water it. I mean, you are the green in your grass. And so many people think that, oh gosh, if I just get over there, it's gonna be so much better, and what happens? They get over there, and then they bring their brown grass with them. <laughs> you, you, you're, the, you're the green in your grass. You've gotta water the grass. 
And what happens is when you're watering your grass and you're tending to your own grass, you don't have time to look at everybody else's. You know, you don't have time to get caught up in the number one disease in America, which is compare-itis. So if, if you're focusing on your own grass and looking, you know, okay, yeah, I can improve here, I can do this, I can water, I can nurture, I can da da da. Trust me, you're not gonna have any time for compare-itis or look at what everybody else is doing. You can just focus on getting your grass as green as possible and then envisioning the day when you can just lay down on that nice, cool, green grass and go, ah, because the grass truly is greener where you water it. And that goes for your health, that goes for your relationships. It's not about, oh gosh, if I could just, if I was married to that person, everything would be different. No, it'd be the same as where you are now because you're in it. So you have to water your own grass. So the grass is greener where you water it. And I encourage you to take action on that. Awesome. Boom. Thank you, Evan Money. Guys, thanks for joining me today. Evan Money, number one bestseller, author, speaker, coach, millionaire, man of God awesome husband and father thanks for coming on the show today maximizers you are are the greatest asset to your own life and i appreciate you guys being such an inspiration to so many other people and being an encouragement to me and what i'm doing so thank you guys appreciate your time god bless you and we're going to see you down the road thanks evan Woo-hoo, i appreciate it hey maximizers i really appreciate your attention If you could five-star this, like it, share, and comment, I would really appreciate that. Be a river, not a reservoir. You guys are awesome. Thank you for tuning in ever so often. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.